Minus eight degrees today. It is finally starting to get cold and you can hear how crispy it is. <laughs> but there's no, not a lot of wind. So like I can be out here and kind of like freeze. Ugh. But I'm okay, I'm okay. So right now it's 11, 10 past 11. So this is gonna be the lightest part of our day today. And after this, it will get dark around two. It's so beautiful. Let me show you what it looks like this way. It's so cool. <laughs> I just found something. What are you eating? It's stuck. Oh, I'm dying. One of his toys is frozen in the ground. Oh, what a cutie. Literally this much was sticking out and he's like, I found it. Get the door, Dinda. Come on, pull it out. Are you said these? Oh, that was cold. It is a beautiful morning as always here on Svalbard. Grim and I start almost every day by looking at the view together. When you know that it soon will be gone for quite a while, it feels even more important to take some time to enjoy it. It is also finally starting to get colder outside with temperatures around minus eight degrees. This time of year can be quite unpredictable when it comes to the weather. And I remember us having some days of around minus 15 degrees Celsius the same time last year. So we are happy that it is cold enough for the snow to stay crispy. After enjoying the views, we had to do some grim grooming and cut his nails. So it was a little bit traumatic for him. <laughs> no, he's actually very good about things like this. We don't have a groomer on the island. And in my opinion, it's not very common to bring your dog to a groomer in Scandinavia. You often just do everything yourself. We do have a vet in town though for any medical things you need or emergencies and things like teeth cleaning, which Grim actually has to go in for soon. <laughs> day. Look at the blue light. But it's so wild. Every day looks a little bit different, even though we have the same amount of light. Like now we have the most amazing horizon where there is horizon, that's Swedish horizon, where there's like this orange glow. Yesterday we had none of that. We just had pink skies instead. It goes so quickly now and I am starting to feel the grip of the polar night. Getting up in the morning is uh, difficult. I have put all of the lights on wake up lights. Oh my God, wait, who am I? The most important thing. Wait, hello? Ah. See what a difference that makes to the vibe. I'm getting a lot of questions from my last video. Like, how is it possible that we have four months of polar night, but only two of two and a half of them are dark? So it's a gradual thing. The sun sets on the 27th of October, and then after about two weeks later, that is when we have pitch black darkness. So it will be less light every day. 
And since the sun doesn't go above the horizon from the 27th of October, we don't see the sun at all. We just get the rays from the mainland and up, which is pretty cool. That's why it's a glowing horizon. And then on the 13th of November, I checked, the sun is more than six degrees below the horizon. And that is when the sun rays don't reach us anymore. That is why it is pitch black from then on for two and a half months. So we've had a lot of new people join the channel lately, which is incredibly exciting. So I just wanna say thank you and welcome. And I thought that I would do, I think I've spoken about why I am here, like in some of my first videos, but I don't really, I can't remember when I last touched on the subject. Like, why am I even on Svalbard? How long have I been here for? What did I do before? So I thought I would do a little sit down chat before I take Grim for my walk this in this beautiful weather and just kind of like catch you up on why I am here and how one ends up in a place like Svalbard. Seven years ago, I was working in Gothenburg. I am from Sweden and Gothenburg is my hometown. So I was in Sweden for the first time in like, I don't know, 10 years. I traveled around a lot when I was younger. So if you hear like a faint Irish accent, it's because my parents moved us to Ireland when I was around 11. So I went to school there and I had the most amazing years of my life. Ireland is one of the most amazing places in the world. And definitely if I wouldn't live here, I could have Ireland. I could move to Ireland in a heartbeat. So we lived there and went to school. I had a proper Irish accent. So like my American accent, which people say that I have, is just from it fading and then from like TV because we get so much American TV in the Europe and Sweden. But so I had a thick Irish accent. I miss it every day. It was amazing. If I talk to Irish people, it still comes out. But so I was in Sweden for the first time in a couple of years and I was working at a hotel. So I did mostly hotel work before. I didn't really have a career path, but I did think I was gonna be like a manager at a hotel, you know? I love working in hospitality. I think working uh, at the front desk, which I was doing, is an amazing, fun job. I always say that if I if I'm wouldn't do this, I could also go back to hotels any day, because I think it's so much fun. I also love the uniform. Oh, I worked in the most beautiful uniform, and I had these loafers with tassels on them. Mm, not at all part of the dress code. Loved it. But so I was working, why am I side dragging? I was working in a hotel in Gothenburg. It was a five-star hotel. And I had a boyfriend at the time. And we had mutual friends that was working at the hotel that suddenly were just going to Svalbard. And I was in kind of one of those periods where I was so bored at what I was doing. I was bored being in Sweden. I wanted my like new adventure. And I didn't know what that was gonna be. So when <clears throat> my boyfriend got the opportunity to go to Svalbard, I said, you have to go. You go and I will join you if you think it's fun. So he decided to go and I planned that if he's gonna stay, cause he was just gonna try it out for the first few weeks, like try it out for a month, see if it's worth it. And then I'll join if it's worth it. And he thought it was so cool. So after a month, I got a job at the same place as him and I just moved. And I arrived here in the middle of polar night. So it was like end of November. It was, I think 2015. And it was just magical and the most wild place. At that time, I hadn't even heard about Svalbard. Nobody was really talking about it. Imagine I've lived my whole life in Scandinavia-ish and I'd never heard about Svalbard. I didn't know that they had polar bears. I didn't know that it existed, that it was a part of Norway, but we moved and then I'm still here. We broke up like a year later, he left the island, no drama or anything. And then I decided to stay. I was still working at the same job. I worked at Husets. By the way, if you stay till the end, I have the most amazing tip on where you can watch a documentary on Husets, which is where I worked and exactly how to run a fine dining restaurant because this video is sponsored by Nebula and Curiosity Stream. So stay till the end to get an incredible discount on how to watch that documentary. It's something like $15, less than $15 for an entire year. And you can check out that documentary and a ton of others. So that's a tip. But so I was working at Huset and I worked at Huset, which is a restaurant slash banquet hall slash bistro. 
uh, for about two and a half years and I was the booking manager. So that is the first job that I had here on Svalbard. And I think it was the most amazing job. It was so much fun. It was challenging. It was also the best way to kind of like start working here in the village because the, it was such a community at that place. So you got a lot of friends straight away. You know, there was people around and it's also where I met Christopher. So Christopher and I didn't really hang out at all. Like I was like, who is this old man working with logistics? And he's like, who is this girl? Uh, so we just kind of knew of each other. And then like two years in of working there, we started hanging out. I think even more than two years, three years or something. We started hanging out and that's how we met and fell in love. And after that, after working at Husset for a few years, I got a job at, I wonder what it is, you know, I kind of forget, but I think I went to my friend Olivia's travel agent because she had a travel agency, sorry, and I worked there because I went to China as well with them and was there for a few weeks to do some like meetings with my boss. Anyway, so I worked at a travel agency and we did a documentary with a Chinese superstar where we were out panning for gold. And this is all in Chinese on YouTube. I'll try to find the link. So that was wild. And then after that, I worked at the clothing store for a while. I loved that as well. I worked at a school up here, which was also so much fun. I was a drone teacher among other uh, tasks I had there. What else have I done here? It was not until like two years ago that I started with videography and I did my first ever videography job for the community council and I did all of their musical segments and that was my first videography job. And now I am working as a full-time content creator. Both me and Christopher work with YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and photography full-time. So this is our job which is incredibly exciting. I get to show off Svalbard and show you like a different way of life here and have it as my job. So I am just enjoying the fact that I can do this full time now and make a living. And we will see, I hope we can do this for a long time because it's so much fun and I love connecting with all of you guys. So here we are and now we're in the middle of the polar night. <laughs> That's also wild. I love this time of year. It is as wild as it sounds. Look at the blue light. That's just gorgeous. I also often get the question, if I want to move there, if I want to move to Svalbard, is that possible? And I really think it is. You know, I've met people that have moved here now just from seeing my videos. So one of the guys, he started working at the Husky Cafe and he said that this place is just as magical as he thought it would be. And it's visa free here on Svalbard, which is good to know, but you do need a visa to travel through Norway here. So that's a good thing to know. But living up here is quite easy. It is definitely a little bit expensive, but everything depends on where you come from. If you come from mainland Norway, this is not expensive. If you come from Sweden, this is not super expensive. It's going to be comparable to places in America. But maybe if you come from Portugal, the living expenses are completely different than what it would be in Portugal. So I think it all depends on what kind of job you can do here in the village because you can get around on only English. A lot of jobs will accept only in English speaking, that, meaning that you don't have a Scandinavian language. So that is not like a must, but then you have some jobs where you must have a Scandinavian language. So it kind of depends. And then you can use the traits that you have. If you, if you work in construction, I think getting a job is quite easy. We have like four different construction companies and they're building stuff all the time. Like our cabin was built by Arvidas. He's from Lithuania. And another guy was here. He was from South Africa. He was working with him for a while. And then there was another guy here. He was from Finland. So we really have people from all over the world and you will meet different kinds of languages and people daily. So I really do think that it is possible if you have like a goal or a dream of moving to Svalbard. I think we need to go on a walk. We're going to head outside into the beautiful weather. It's crispy and cold. Grim is outside hanging out. That's why he's not here right now. But we're gonna go and enjoy the little few hours of daylight we have. Because I think that in the next video or in the next week's video, no more light. It's gonna be completely dark. So we just gotta, you know, make the most of this dark light. What? We're gonna make the most of this last civil twilight that we have. So let's finish this cup of coffee and then head out and get fully geared up. 
I think that's going to be good. Har du det bra grim? It is so perfectly crispy outside. Are you having a good time, Grim? We're gonna do our long walk today because, you know, there's no wind. It is absolutely gorgeous and I feel like it's the perfect opportunity to savor the last of the daylight. Oh, oh and I'm so happy to have brought out my puffer jacket because these jackets are the most comfortable in the entire world. So I'm not cold, I'm not too warm. And everything is just absolutely beautiful. So I'm enjoying this so much. So, so much. And I'm listening to a podcast, which is what I always do. Are you okay, Grim? What are you looking at? There's a lot of foxes behind me that live here. So he can see them and hear them. And I have, like, I cannot see them. But he notices every single little movement. So it's really cool to see. Also, we finally bought something so smart. I've been living here seven years without these. Like walking kind of. Let's see if I can show you. Yeah. Woo. Walking spikes. Because I almost, oh, well, I did fall the other day. Because you can see this is just like completely ice. But with these, I have so much good traction. Come and sit down. Up, up. Venta. The reindeers have gone. Go ahead. Flink. Flink. walked for 45 minutes and we are now in Bjørndal and we almost walked all the way to the uh, to the mine over there we just stopped like 100 meters before because there was some reindeer so we don't disturb them and it's <coughs> so beautiful here look at the light today I saw on Facebook a few days ago that there was a polar bear up on Plateaufjellet, which is the mountain that I'm looking at, like all the way over. So we're keeping an extra eye out for tracks, but we haven't seen anything. And Grim is pretty good at noticing anything. Like he, he looks around and he sees every single reindeer. So I'm thinking he will see a polar bear as well. A lot of people ask like how he would react and he's never met a polar bear face 
to face. He's only really seen one when it has been outside of the cabin walls and he's heard it before Einar because that was when he was at home at, with Einar and Fenris and he heard it before anybody else heard it so him and Fenris alerted to something being outside and I mean they don't alert to reindeer or foxes really outside because they know it's not dangerous but they alerted to this polar bear and were like something's outside and then it was just straight outside the door so that's pretty cool well it's going to be interesting to see like how he reacts if we would run into one because I'm thinking he would be like oh I can take this like will he recognize that this is a super dangerous animal that he cannot go and like say hello to so I guess we're gonna have to oh see that oh great like now look what are you doing there's a I guess a reindeer down there <laughs> But so if you're new here, as you can see, I'm carrying my shotgun, which is for polar bear protection. And I have it loaded with slugs, so it's half loaded. Um, so it's not in the barrel, but it's in, it's ready to go. Because if you have your gun here and you are out hiking, you need to kind of like prepare for the fact that you can run into a polar bear. So you need to be like fully prepared. You're like a meerkat, honey. Are you okay? But so since there was a polar bear just up on this mountain, we are keeping like a little bit extra of an eye. I'm still listening to podcasts and everything, but it's quite good to just look for tracks. And now it's pretty light out. So I can see like pretty far. But, you know, I would never be able to see a polar bear, I think, if it's lying around because it is so well like... Uh, camouflaged. It's the exact same color as the snow, you know. It's yellow, actually. So, yeah, but now we're gonna walk home. Like I said, we've been out for 48 minutes. It's only like three kilometers, but it's because it's a bit icy and we're walking pretty slowly and Grim is, you know, saying hi to every single reindeer. <laughs> so it's taking a while, but it's really, really nice to be out for a really long walk and, you know, just really enjoying this beautiful blue light because it is gorgeous. So freaking gorgeous. Yeah, lots of reindeer. There is something so special about this time of year. I don't know if it's the anticipation of the long darkness, if it's the gorgeous blue light, or the fact that the moon and the stars are lighting up the sky all hours of the day, but this season carries some sort of magic in the air. I find myself looking at the views with a huge smile on my face and a sense of calm filling up my entire body. I swear that this must be the epitome of balsam för själen, as we say in Swedish, which translates to balm for the soul in English. I feel very content, like I'm in a state of peaceful happiness. I'm making sure to bottle this feeling so I can reach for it in a few weeks if I need to, and if I feel like the darkness is starting to weigh me down. But this year, I feel like I have all the tools I need for a successful powder night. Hope, happiness, and a hell of a lot of coffee. <laughs> Less kisses in the face. Mm. More kisses for you. More kisses for you, my sweetheart. So I just want to say a huge thank you for watching this video. We've had so many new people join the channel lately, which is very exciting. And the fact that you're joining in the beginning of Polar Night is extra fun because this time of year is so magical. This video is also sponsored by Nebula and Curiosity Stream, and I have the best tip for Curiosity Stream this time. I've realized that they have a documentary on Huset. And Huset is the place that I worked at for two and a half years here on Svalbard. And they've done a short documentary all about it. So if you wanna get access to that, as well as Nebula, you can use my bundle deal. 
But what is Nebula, you might ask? You can see all of my videos as well as many other creators on Nebula completely ad free. Nebula is a creator owned streaming platform. It's the home of tons of exclusive ad free content, both original productions as well as bonus content from some of your favorite creators. You can get access to all of that exclusive content and curiosity stream using the bundle deal. And that makes it less than 15 US dollars for an entire year. Curiosity Stream is an amazing place on the internet if you like to watch documentaries, which I really do. The series The History of Food travels around the world to meet pioneers in areas like urban farming, veganism, and more to find out what will be the future of food. The episode on Huset is a short documentary about how it is to run a fine dining restaurant at the end of the world, where there is almost no produce to source of the island. It was filmed at Huset at the same time I was working there, and it's really interesting to hear the head chef talk about how he built his menu and what it's like to run a fine dining restaurant on Svalbard. So thank you so much for being here and for watching my videos and for joining my channel. Just head to the link in the description to grab that deal and check out the Husa documentary as well as all of my videos ad free. And I will see you guys in the next video. So thank you again for being here. I appreciate you all. Bye.